look, that look right there says something. I don't know how I'm doing. Uh, this no, is the greatest man. interview ever. Man. But I do know it's already done. <laughs> Spotlight thing and all of the press and all of the the, the, you know, the focus on me, I can take. Yeah. But uh, Leticia, I wanted to make sure she was already in the spotlight. And she's been doing an amazing job. I mean, she birthed me. I'm geeking when I first met her. Yeah. yeah. But you know how I am. <laughs> I know. I was, you know, well, we knew this moment was coming, you know, but I know that you are, you're camera shy. That's not your, your private person. Now you're just out there. So how? <laughs> let's just talk about it. Just recently, you did your first sermon, mm-hmm. um, and this is the first time, as far as you guys doing. You you went. You've been out in public, but this is your first public outing together where there was media involved. Um, how was that? Well, I have to say that it was something supernatural. It was so real. Um, but it was cool. It wasn't as I had re- like played it in my mind. It actually ended up being ease, easy. You know, it was like with a lot of um, grace in the space that we were in. I think, like you mentioned, um, I knew this moment was coming, but it was something supernatural that was happening because looking back on it, it's been just like on different little excerpts. It's been like, wow. So it's kind of like I'm in a space of just, it's so real. Gotcha. kind of thing but it's been cool so far okay so far we hope it stayed that way <laughs> <laughs> no yeah but no it's been it's been fun i um i was surprised that when i you know went, walked up to the pulpit i expected them to see leticia yeah. in the front row she expected that that's what they told us mm-hmm. Uh, I turned around and she was coming on the stage as well and sitting in the seat next to me. Oh, wow. And I immediately panicked because I'm thinking about yeah. how does she feel in front of all of these people. Um, but she did handle it with grace and charm. I know, I absolutely know that that was nothing but the power of God. It, it was. And because, I mean, she would have been like, oh my God. She said she's surprised she didn't pass out. Yeah, yeah or <laughs> didn't run back into the back. Yeah. It, it escorted myself back into the back area. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, now everyone knows who the Detroit woman is because that's been your name recently in the media, right? The Detroit woman? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. A known woman from Detroit. So yeah. um, I, I'm, I'm excited, though, so that people can um, know I've got a chance to kind of see behind the scenes. Um, you guys see this come together. Um, and so I'm excited that people can finally be able to witness the love that you guys encompass. Um Okay. I'm glad that you finally excited though. <laughs> oh, Not on guard. Where are we going? There? <laughs> no, just glad you're excited. <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay. Okay. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, I think that's a we'll, we'll get to that point. Uh, we'll get to that point. <laughs> we'll get to that point. You know, a lot of people want to know. Obviously, Kwame, you just got out, right? Mm-hmm. How long have you were incarcerated? Uh, I was incarcerated 39 days short of eight years. Wow. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, too long. Yes. Mm-hmm. Too long. Yeah. So my. So then, how did we get to here where we're at today? Okay. So, um, you want to tell? I can tell the first part. Yeah. She left the administration. We got married. Uh, left the administration, and uh, I didn't see her again. And, and I didn't see her again until well, I, I'm on in prison. I get a computer message from a, a mutual person that we know. And she tells me that she has this prophetic vision that she wants you to hear. And I'm like, little Leticia has a prophetic vision, right? And so she said, yeah, oh, she's really into the spirit realm and the church. And, wow. and she has this prophetic vision. So I mean, by the, you know, I said, I, why don't you just get it from her? Mm-hmm. And then I, you know, I talked to her. And and so this all, was like three times I had told this person. Oh, while well, I was in prison, there was a prophet who had this prophetic vision. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't really... I was like, okay, yeah. Yeah, little Leticia's a little prophet now. Huh? So I, I didn't call, I didn't reach out. And then one day I was sitting around and I found a note that this woman had wrote, written me. She actually put it on the computer and mailed me. And I was cleaning up my room and I found it. 
and it had Leticia's phone number on it. And I said, okay, let me go and see if I can hear this prophetic vision. And I called her. And that was in August of 2018. Wow. And I called her, and she told me what the Lord had given me. And it was spot dead on to what was going on in my life, and also a warning in it, and then also what I needed to do. And she didn't even know. She was just speaking to what she saw in her vision. And it, it messed me up. And from then on, we just started this conversational type relationship where we were just praying for each other. Yeah. It was uh, very innocent. I, I, I tell everybody, this is the first organic relationship that I've ever been in. It started with actual friendship, getting to know each other. Um, because of the walls of separation, literally, there was no ability for me to take out the lunch, <laughs> take out the dinner. We had to talk and write to get to know each other without even liking each other. It was it was weird, yeah. but it was perfect. And there was a dynamic moment when I was calling her Little Leticia, right? Because I still call her, so Little Leticia, you know? And then one day she bossed up on me on the phone. She said, I am not Little Leticia. I am a grown woman. I'm 37 years old. <laughs> I said, what? And that's what made me start liking her. It was that boss up moment. And I told her, uh, I'm starting to like you. And uh, I don't need to be doing that. I got a 28 year prison sentence, uh, you know. And you, you're beautiful. You should, I don't need to go. And she's gonna say this, so I'm gonna say it first. So I cut off communication. I stopped uh, the computer conversations. Oh, wow. I stopped calling. Yeah, he, he cut me off. Oh, okay. <laughs> no more prayer. No, no more prayer. intercession. I, yeah, I can't be liking the person praying for me, you know. And I can't be liking anybody in the condition that I was in. I can't be in a sincere relationship inside of a prison and he had this infinite thing for us to um for me to have like the life i dream of and just to be you know to just not be selfish and wanting to make sure that i fulfill all that god had for me so that was a big thing for him too like i don't want to do anything to obstruct anything that god has for her so that was huge that was really huge for him yeah yeah, yeah. Wow. And, and about a month later, I, I called her back. Like, hey, man, listen, I, I'm thinking about you way too much. What are you over there doing? Because her prayers are powerful. And uh, I mean, heaven heaven moves. The throne of heaven moves when she prays. Yeah. And so I was trying to figure out what she was saying. I'm not doing anything. That's you. You have a problem. You know, I should talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I should talk. So I, it, I prayed. Uh, you know, I would tell her one day I would go out on the yard. I pray to stop liking it. I would pray, Lord, Lord take this wow. out of me. Take this away from me. Finally, we agreed to visit one another. And uh, she came and visited. And since then, uh, I fell in love with this woman. Wow. And uh, it was the greatest, um, to me, romantic and love story ever. The most weird, the most peculiar, but also the most beautiful. And, and that's how we got to this place right here. Just continuously talking to one another. Um, she has, she's helped me. My my go-to is political. She she won't let you be political. So you have to be real. You have to you have to be truthful. You can't leave details out. You can't do any of those things. And so uh, she's she helped me become a better man. And as I felt I felt and experienced that happening, it drew me to her in a love relationship that I've never had before. Yeah. And so it was crazy for me because I'm sitting here kicking it with him and we talking and I'm telling him about all of these different things I know God has for me and, you know, what God said about the man of my dreams, yeah. never thinking that he was the one, yeah. you know, so I'm just being organic about, you know, the Lord said this and somebody prophesied this and, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Whatever. And then, no, but this real um, ridiculous moment was when I'm telling him about the type of man, oh, he's going to love me for me, and he's going to be a blessed man, and he's going to be successful. This is what the Lord said. And he's going to say, well, who you going to be? <laughs> <laughs> well, what is God going to do in you? So that was a like, that was like huge because it's like, okay, that was something I started to actually process well what is it that i am going to be or who am i so that was it was crazy you know so it's a, a couple of things that um i want to hit on so earlier we talked about you know not being okay with it at first it wasn't on board with it no um 
for me, it really came from the same reason why you blocked her was the same reason why I wasn't gay. Mm -hmm. Because to have your sister dating someone who's incarcerated, not knowing when you're going to get out, right. well, you knew in the spirit, mm -hmm. but looking at what it is, it's like seeing her take the trips to visit alone, going to New Jersey, going to um, Louisiana. Louisiana, and taking these trips and seeing her on the phone call. And when, we, when I would come home, like, guys would always be on the phone or just seeing so much of her life being uh, promised as something that you, we didn't know. And so it's easy to uh, look at it from, okay, is this person being selfish? You know, are they taking her from her life or what could be, you know, <laughs> because in that moment, it seemed like it's more edifying for you because it's companionship, but she's free where she can have options. So me as her brother, it's like, well, what is his intent? Because if I were in that situation, yes, you, you're going to warrant love, mm -hmm. companionship, but there's limitations. And so um, I remember telling, uh, I think I was talking to my cousin, uh, one of my cousins, I think it was Kenya who I was talking to. We'll just throw her name out there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put her on blast. Right, put her on blast. She all right with it. But I remember saying when we knew that um, the possibility that we were going to get out, I was I was saying, you know, no, actually you were out right around your birthday. And I said, if he's serious, he will propose and the wedding will happen, you know, it will happen fast. If oh, he's wow. serious. I literally I didn't I was know like, if that was your projection or yeah. your uh, disclaimer. Well, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Because I'm, I, you know, I also, you know, you're kind of like a mentor to all of us. You know, wow. You got to see you know, I went to Cash, you went to Cash, mm -hmm. and I remember seeing you at the inauguration in the old gym, mm -hmm. my ninth grade year. That's wow. when you inaugurated. Wow. And so, um, and I also remember when I, I went to Garvey as well, mm -hmm. and yeah. we came up to the state. Uh, the We came up when you went to state, state representative. representative. Okay. I remember coming to the office and visiting. Wow. And so, I didn't know that. Like that. And so, um, you know, you're someone we're like, okay, Kwame's a smart man. So if he's serious, then he's not going to waste time, you know? Um, and especially knowing that what the relationship is going to cause for my, I'm looking at my sister yeah. as far as being in a relationship with you, what type of attention it's going to bring to her. And I know she's a very private person. Um, she doesn't even, you know, like to be in family group texts. Like she's, right. <laughs> she's so, she's very private, very shy. Uh, more of a she's a, a introvert extrovert kind of like That's a lot exactly of personality right. but, but it's with people she knows yeah it's very comforting to you know hear you say those things and mm -hmm. to hear that you have some of the same concerns that I had um, and just to see how you guys move like honestly watching you guys when I came for the birthday week and seeing her on the phone seeing you guys talk y'all like two kids in love like mm -hmm. like two 18 year olds mm -hmm. so wow. I think it's it's amazing I tell people like yo it's you can just look at it like, mm -hmm. you know, you can't really deny what you see. And when you see the energy and just even see my sister, like, you're a better person. Uh, I feel like with him, I've seen you in relationships. And <laughs> usually it's like this competitive, it's really competitive in relationships where it's like, I've never seen you laugh and joke Aww. where it's like you with your friend. Um, and that's what I've seen with you too. So that's, awesome. that's what made me be okay. Over. Um, as well as if I have somebody to be here. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's good. Yeah. I, I, and I say this too, you know, my first thing for saying that, that's uh, because we had the same concerns because we love Matisse. Yeah. You know, and uh, I love her anyway, she's telling us, no matter what. You know, uh, I, I grew to understand that, listen, this is where I am. And I told her, the Lord told me seven years. Yeah. And for her to even believe that with me, I was like, but even though she's she, she's nuts, she can't do this. I can't let her do it. Yeah. I cannot let her do that. And I used to tell her that. She said, "Okay, you call me crazy one more time." Yeah. You know. <laughs> so, yeah. I, but it was it's a thing of uh, that's when I knew that I actually loved her and that God had sent her because when she just decided, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let God lead. You're not going to be overthinking in your mind, and I'm not going to be overthinking. We both are overthinkers. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do is put our minds out of the way and just let God lead us. And 
that last 200 or so days when they were announcing, I'm coming out. No, he's not. I'm coming out. No, he's not. I was, uh, every conversation I had with her, I was praying. I said, now this, this, this Leticia Maria Kwame Malik thing is happening. So yeah. I need you to get yourself together. Yeah. This K M and L. Right. So this thing is about. You to happen. always say that it's happening. It's happening. You need to get happening. yourself together. And so I was all like reserved, like okay, okay, what? it's gonna be okay. I said, no, it's a lot with me. Now you gotta understand yeah, this. Exactly. Now it's gonna be speed. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be fine. And you know, I, we're gonna do it. The Lord's gonna be the. Lord. So it's, I was like, oh, okay. So this weekend, oh, the weekend I was in Detroit for, you know, all. The, that was for my birthday. No, the weekend when when I preached that. Oh, okay, okay. Um, when I when she saw the crowds and people grabbing and people pulling and people walking up to her, and I was just watching them, and she was handling it. When we got in the car, she was like, yeah. <laughs> "Oh my god, what's wrong with these people?" I said, "They just, you know, everybody's uh, they love you and they love me, yeah. and they love a story of redemption, and, and they want to touch it." Yeah. And unfortunately, people actually want to touch they her. Want to touch her. So, literally. <laughs> they literally, they literally wanted to touch her. You know, and so it's been uh, it's been something. But she's been prepared by this for this. Uh, by God, she's been prepared for this a long time. So tell me this. Um, you know, I just address you know my feelings. Um, I know that the, both of you guys are parents. So Leticia, you have my beautiful nephew. You have a son. And Kwame, you have three boys. So um, tell me. How has it been with the families? How are your families uh, adjusting to this union? So for me, um, it's been a long time coming for um, my son and I. Lathan has wanted a father figure in his home since he was a young little boy. He's 10, probably since he was three, you know, just longing for that male um, inspired voice in the home. So he, but he was excited. Um, he is excited. Um, just trying to blend it off with just, you know, him finding balance with his father and him embracing him having a stepfather. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it's been good though. He's, he's excited about Kwame. He loves him. He loved him before he actually physically met him from just a phone conversation, him praying and having visions that he was coming home. So he's kind of, you know, excited about it, but as well as trying to balance his mom actually loving someone else and sharing the space himself with his mom with a man, another man. He's never seen me on a date. He's never seen me embrace or kiss anyone or be in love with anyone else. So it's been a little tug of war with Lathan because Lathan's trying to find out where he fits when he, he don't have to fit. He's there. He's a part of just what it is. You know, so it's been cool, though. A little bit of friction with Lathan trying to, you know, steal the show always and wanting to be the main focus and having to share the spotlight with his mom. Yeah. But for the most part, it's been a really cool experience. So, With, with my sons, um, whether you're 25, 19, or 10, you always have these dreams of your, of your dad getting back with your mom. Okay. You know, I know that that was something. At some point that Lathan had, at something at some point that Jonas, Jelani, and Jaleel had. And so me walking out of prison, and that's not a reality. They had to first get over that. Okay. That was the main thing that they had to give us. You know, you ain't gonna be with mom. Absolutely not. I've been with mom forever. So but I mean it didn't it's this dream that I think all kids had. I think I had it till I was about forty. You know, that <laughs> one day one day my mother and father they they realized that they can they could actually be better off if they were together. But I mean, it's just I not happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But, uh, oh, right. That is funny. That's so funny. <laughs> but, uh, but, but they're, they're, they're actually excited now. They, we, we had a, a kind of a manhood weekend. We went and the four of us kind of got into a room and, and talked for about three or four days. It changed everything. Okay. Um, you know, they, they, I left, uh, and went to prison when they were 16 and 10, really. And and so coming back, and you got twenty five year olds, um, and you know a nineteen year old, it's a little different. And right. so really, you know, but they still feel like uh, Jelani has left. I, I still feel like that thirteen, fourteen year old kid. I want to have that time with my dad, even though I'm twenty five. Mm -hmm. And so the tug of war, it wasn't Leticia. It wasn't. It was just the fact that I was having something else to do other than do them, uh, whatever I'm gonna do with them. 
But at the same time, they got a chance to live their lives uh, and do what they wanted to do. But whenever they wanted to spend some time with me, I was supposed to be available. So we had to get through that period. We're through it now. Uh, they are excited about the next life. They can see what you see. They see their dad happy. They, they see their dad, like, you know, in a different space altogether. Um, that I am living how I've been talking to them about how I'm living. And they like that. And, and so now they're talking about being a part of it, coming to this or that. And with Lathan, you know, I, I just do, I want to say this because I think it's, it's, it's both of us believe this. I want his, his, him and his father's relationship to be amazing. You know, I, I really do. I want him and his father to have the type of relationship that he dreams about. But I also want to have a relationship with him since he'll be in the house that we live in where, you know, uh, he knows that he has another guy yeah. um, that's in the dad position that is going to love him and, yeah. and, and encourage him and inspire him. And, 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 you know, and that's what I want to have. So respecting the position of the father, but also um, making sure that he understands that I love him as well. And then with, with Maticia, it's the same thing, except these are not little kids. These are grown men. But yeah. she, we pray for Carlita. We pray for her to have the type of life that she, um, God really wants for her. And, and my also, ex-husband as well. And, and we also pray for and, her ex-husband. And, and both of your ex, I mean, they, they all have moved on, too. They have their own families and relationships, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely yeah, for so. me. Yeah, he, yeah. we've not been together in eight years, so yeah. if not more. And he has another beautiful child and everything so i don't see where it should be an issue yeah. yeah and and just so people know my divorce was final in, in july of 2018 from carlita but we really hadn't been together uh, since i walked into that prison you know wow. really uh since 2012 okay. uh, 2013 and so yeah there's been a two separate lives being lived for almost a decade yeah and so it's those are things that have moved on and we now embracing a new life together and uh and that life includes Jelani, Jaleel, Jonas, and Lathan. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, question: Has Khalidia, is, have you have you met her or had a conversation? Is she? I have uh, never, I've never had a conversation on this side, but I've seen and met Khalidia before, just from being in the administration okay. and that kind of thing. Yeah, gotcha, but gotcha. no, not on a personal level of in this space. Okay. Yeah, but I've spoken to her by way of being on the phone with Jonas and her okay. in the background. So, yeah. But she's, and she's giving her blessing to, to the I had a conversation her. with her and told her that I was, uh, you know, getting engaged. And, and she, she wished me the best. And she was excited and happy that I called her and told yeah. her. She thought that was very respectful. Um, and that's the last conversation that I had with her. But I think she's fine. Okay. You know? I have not had a conversation with Lathan's dad yet. I'm looking forward to having that conversation. Too. I'm actually really looking um, and real quick, you said engagement. When did you guys get engaged? Most people don't know that part. Yeah. How and when? So, um, he flew in town right after he got out. was like the following weekend leading up to my birthday. So, he came in town. And so, it was the night of my actual birthday. Wow. Yeah. And how old is that, your turn? Do you want to share that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. 40. Wow. Yeah, I'm excited about it. How fabulous I look at 40. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so on the night of my birthday, he asked me to marry him. Wow. Yeah. What did you say? I said, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Did you cry? Did you, how was that? Did you know he was going to ask? I didn't. No, it was a total, totally unorthodox way. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. But I mean, it was, it was, uh, for me, it was, I knew that it, when I got out of the prison and I wanted to spend, we talked about a number of days that we wanted to spend together before we were sure and we were trying to put this together. I'm like, I would think it was 60 days. Yeah. Let's spend we 60 days. It went from 90 days. down to 30. 60. Then it went it about 30. Yeah. But um, I told her on January 15th when I was on the phone. She was saying, well, if you're not at my, because the whole thing was, I'll be home for your birthday. Mm -hmm. I kept telling her, I'll be home with you, but I'll be there for yeah. your birthday. And then by January 15th, she said, well, even if you're not there for my birthday. I was like, no, uh -uh, no, we're not doing this. I'll be there for your birthday. He said, I'm spending at, your birthday with, with you. With you. And, and so on January 21st, I mean, January 20th, I walk out of there. 
And so a week later, I was there. And that was a powerful moment and a miracle for both of us. And so it was in the context of understanding what that moment was and having that discussion. And I said, you know what? And that's that's when I asked him again. And so it's uh, that was that's why I was up. It was not planned. I, there was no cake. I didn't give the waiter a ring. It was none of that kind of thing. It was just spontaneous. And but I meant every word of it. Aww. Love that. Love that. So, um, <laughs> so yeah. Since we're talking about Lathan, Lathan, I know I see him over. He's there. A, he's I'm chomping at the bit, man. Come, come on, Lathan, come, Lathan, come here Hi. real quick. This is Big L right here. Everybody meet Lathan. Hi. Yeah. You all right, big fella? Yeah. That's good. That's good. Do you have anything to say? Um, just happy for Lauren that she's doing wonderful. Oh, <laughs> is that all? Is that all? That's, and you're yeah. out of here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lathan Stevens, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <Lathan> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I want to talk about ministry. Okay. Is that right? Let's do it. All right. So we know that for Kwame, you just started preaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Atisa, you also are a preacher, and you've preached in the past. So can you just kind of share what your um, history as it relates to ministry and then what you guys have planned together um, as far as the ministry? So I'm not a preacher. Okay. I am um, a... Roll the clip. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, have, I, have, I, I, am, I am God's mouthpiece, I would say. Um, I do whatever it is that the Lord tells me to do, and sometimes... I have ministered in the past, um, and so my plan is just to really um, set the captive free and, you know, proclaim the works of the Lord, to just have people live a life abundantly and to live free of sin and to just be free, just to be free and be who God created them to be, to walk on the level of their calling and live in the supernatural ability that they have in Christ Jesus. So that's what I'm about. Sound like a preacher, huh? Yeah, it did. Yeah, I, I was convicted. That's yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's it, Lord. Okay. Yeah. Yay. So yeah, um, so yeah. That's what I'm excited about. Really seeing people be free and be healed and whole. That's what I'm big on. When we do interviews, I, I say, so what's going on with you? You know, how are you doing? Like really wanting the total person restored and where they're in a good space. So like when people are around us, whoever it is that's helping us or serving with us, we want to make sure everybody is happy yeah. and in a place authentically where they're happy within themselves, knowing who they are and who they are. So that's what I'm big on. So, yeah. So I know you did the, you, you preached at um, Little Rock. Mm-hmm. And also Greater Emmanuel. And Greater Emmanuel. So, um, are you planning on pastoring a church, or what's the plan? I'm going to wait on God for okay. that. Um, I, you know, he told me to preach his word, teach it, um, encourage and edify people. And uh, I'm going to do that. And he keeps opening doors for me to be able to do that. Uh, we're launching a ministry here pretty soon. Um, we've received the name of it, and, and I'm ready to get it in place and launch it. And uh, I think people will be hearing about that soon as well. Um, you know, and it was kind of a joint effort in coming up with the name, and which is why I know that it was him. Um, and so just after we get the structure in place, go around and have some meetings with some different people. We'll know more. Um, of course, there are people who inter- are interested already in me pastoring. But I'm not, I'm not trying to get a job. Okay. If it's a calling, that's one thing. But I don't want to go and be a pastor without understanding and absolutely knowing that that's God's permission to do that, not somebody. So um, at this particular point, um, you know, uh, I'm finishing a book. Um, We have uh, some conversations going in the entertainment industry. Um, And I'm going to move around the country and encourage and edify and and stir up uh, people to be all that God has called them to be. But I have to say this, she is a preacher. And, you know, when she receives something from the Lord, she's going she gonna, she gonna to tell it. She's mm-hmm. going to tell it. And so uh, she has gifts inside of her that uh, she likes to keep in that private thing that she has. But God is calling her out of that. And everybody we talk to tells her the same thing. Anybody with a gift of seeing her 
um, they can see that, that, that she's about to explode in ministry and speak what God has put in her belly to speak for it. And it's going to be an awesome thing. <laughs> wow. I love that. Well, that's all I have. I just thank you guys for sitting down. Wow. That was good. Look at God. <laughs> oh, it's wow. delivering. Spring well, he didn't hey. talk about none of the stuff when he was a kid. Hey. Oh, man. He hey. let you up there. Right? Hey. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he tell what story. That's good. This is part one. <laughs> this is part one. Yeah. So you have now your age. I'm going to save the story for my team. I'll cut you in though, but hey, I got you guys. Yeah, yeah. Wedding. All right. Wow, he's gifting that's good. a gift. That's exactly. good. From somebody else. That's okay. He's re gifting. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, that's good. And, wow. and, and he's and he only giving some of it. You heard yeah, it? I love it. I love <laughs> he's taking his he's portion cutting us off in. the top. Yeah. yeah. Like Frank Y'all should take this show. Yeah. This is good. Y'all should take this on the road. This is the show right here. <laughs> Love it. Wow, he saved my right. 20%. I hey, appreciate you, Lamar. I no, appreciate you. Yeah. Man. Welcome yeah, to yeah. the family. I appreciate um, that. I can't wait to the wedding. And uh, again, welcome to the family. Wow. Can't wait to your wedding. Yeah, that's coming. Yeah. Okay, yeah. amen. Yeah. It's yeah. coming. Yeah. I mean, like Jesus is yeah. coming, or like it's really. <laughs> you know, after this comes out, my DM's going to be popping. Oh, there it is. The DM. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh. Wow. Well, listen. All right. I appreciate y'all. Oh, it's time man. for y'all to get out of my house. Okay. <laughs> oh, you can come over? You can come over. Wow. We thought you could come over. All up, man. All up. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. Blessings. Blessings. Welcome to you. Yeah. All right. Thank you.